plus 10 to the x plus 5. When you have an exponential equation with a variable in the exponent, the only way to solve this is by putting it in log form. So quick review of that, because you may have forgotten this. So we learned the other day that 2 cubed is 8. We know that. That's exponential form. When you put this in log form, the base of the exponent becomes the base of the log. The answer over here goes in the argument, and then the exponent always goes in the answer to the log. So these go back and forth, 2 and 2, and then these, like, switch places, okay? So you have to memorize how to go back and forth. So to solve this, we're going to go the other direction. So we're in exponential form. What happens is this is the base of the exponent. It goes into the base of the log. 27 goes here, and the answer becomes the exponent, x plus 5. Okay, this is a calculator value. We now can use our calculator to get this lovely decimal rounded to three decimal places. So we got 1.431. Remember the 10 is given. You don't have to plug that in. Some of your calculators do it. I think they all might at this point. But if you just put log 27, that's correct. Okay. And then we just subtract 5 from both sides to finish isolating for x. And we get a negative 3.5. So the most important thing to remember is going into log form to solve. All right. So exponential functions in general can be used to describe growth of bacteria, voltage, radioactive decay, hopefully the growth of your money in a bank account, and maybe like the population of rabbits. All right. That would be exponential growth. A lot of them. So there's two graphs. You don't have to write that down, but do write these two graphs down. We're going to show what a growth graph looks like and what a decay graph looks like. All right, so you guys know, like, lines. You have linear functions. You know parabolas, which go in quadratic functions. You know hyperbolas, a little bit in circles. Those are the kind of things we've graphed so far. This is exponential. So when you're doing exponential growth, it starts out, like, kind of flat, and then... Depending on how quickly it grows, it starts rising quickly, all right? So when something grows exponentially, you might be doubling or tripling, okay? It depends on how fast it's growing, but it's going to look something like this for exponential growth. So this axis, the x-axis, is usually labeled t for time, and our output would be a sub t, our end amount. And whatever value is here we call a naught, which is the initial amount. Wherever it crosses the y-axis is what you started with. That's, oh, yeah, which it's like a zero. a naught, initial amount, okay? So decay looks similar, but it starts with a lot, and then it decreases. So decay might be like you take a Tylenol, and maybe every hour you have half of the Tylenol left in your body. All right. Uh, so again, T, this would be my initial amount. And this axis would be A sub T, whatever you have at time T. Basically, just memorize the general shape of growth and decay. All right. All right, so this formula we're going to use a lot, so I'm going to make sure you have this in your notes. So a sub t equals a sub 0 times t to the kt. So it's growth when k is positive, and it's decay when k is negative. So we're always solving for k. We have to figure out what that value is. They're going to give us enough information. We find the k in the 
into a positive number, that means that can make a growth. If it's a negative number, that means that can make a recession. So A of T, that's how you say the A sub T, is the amount that you have at time T. So what's your answer? After five years, there's 30 million rabbits. Okay? So A T would be the 30 million rabbits. It's a lot of rabbits. A sub zero, we already talked about, is the initial amount. So maybe we started with uh, three rabbits. K is a constant. We already talked about that. It's different each time. And then T is the time. So after five years, however many rabbits, okay, for growth and recession. So let's try a problem. The number of rabbits exponentially. At first there were 400. Three years later there were 1,600. How many rabbits would there be at the end of 10 years? All right, so I'm going to put a little break here. You never want to do that last part until you find K, all right? So start with this formula that we just wrote down. Okay, 400. At first there were 400. Where do we put that number? There you go. A naught. That's how I say it. A naught. Put it in 400, okay? Now, it gives us this point. It says, and a lot of people miss this number because it's written as a word, but three years later, there were 1,600. That is a coordinate point on the graph. So after three years, there were 1,600 rabbits. You use this value to find K. So you know the answer after a certain amount of time. So A sub T would be, after three years, we have 1,600 rabbits. We plug that in as our answer. We're going to solve for K, so we're not going to plug that in. And then T is three years. So three years, 1,500 gets plugged in for time and end amount. Okay, we use that information to find K. The whole point is to get K. First thing you have to do, and this is important, is divide by 400. You have to isolate that T. Okay, so 1,600 divided by 400 is 4. And then for K times 3, I'm just going to flip it and put the 3 in front. It's the same thing as the next time, so I'm going to put 3K. All right, to cancel the E, you can use the LN. So we can take the ln of both sides. So I could do the ln on this side and the ln on that side. Put it in front of both sides. Okay, so then I have the ln of 4, which we're going to use our calculator to find. And on the right-hand side, the ln and the e cancel out. They go away, and we have 3k, and we can move it out of the exponent now, so it's just 3k left over. And then we divide both sides by 3. You can plug this whole thing into your calculator. Just make sure you close parentheses so you're only doing the ln of 4. And then you divide by 3. And we're going to round, we're going to write our answer down rounded to three decimal places. Good. So since this is a positive number, we have exponential growth. This makes sense for rabbits, okay? Now, I want you guys to store this value in your calculator. You probably haven't learned how to do this yet, but let's go back to a problem. We stored this in our calculator, so we're going to get a more exact answer. And now we go back to what we know and answer the question. How many rabbits would there be at the end of 10 years? So, A sub... So instead of A sub T, I want to know what's the answer after 10 years. We have the same initial amount. We still started with 400 rabbits. Now we finally know K. So instead of 0.462, you guys stored this in your calculator as K. So you're going to use that, and we're going to hope that it works. You just learned how to do this. And then we're going to plug in the time, which now is 10 years. How many after 10 years? You can plug this whole thing in, 
to your calculator, and we'll see 400 times E to the K times C. All right, so after 10 years, there are 40,637, that would be weird, 0.437 of a rabbit. decay problem, so same formula, A sub C equals A not E to the K times C. So in the beginning, there were 4.25 ounces of radioactive material. So in the beginning, there were 4.25 ounces. Where do we plug this in for? Okay. Um, it decayed exponentially. So again, don't use the last sentence until we plug this in. This is a coordinate point, and don't miss this number here because it's not written as a number. Ten years later, we have 3.92 ounces. So after ten years, there were 3.92 ounces. So the answer, we get 3.92 after ten years. So ten for T, 3.92 for answer. The point of that one coordinate point is so we can find K. You have to divide by 4.25 first on both sides. So 0.922. Now you can use second answer so you get an exact value. So leave that 0.922 on your calculator. So you guys might want to make sure you did that, 3.92 divided by 4.25, so you've got that decimal on your calculator, because you can get an exact answer this way. Now, to cancel the E, we're going to take the LN of both sides. This cancels it here, and now, hopefully, on your calculator, you can just plug in LN second answer, and it saves it. You will get a more exact answer. And then keep that answer and divide by 10. And we get a value for K of about negative something. Anyone who's got it? Yeah. All right. So now, how much would remain after 30 years? Now that we found K, we can say, well, how much will we have after 30 years? So A sub 30. We started with the same initial amount, so we still have 4.25 ounces as our initial amount, and then E, and instead of this value, we can use K, so I'm going to plug this in for my formula, and I want to know after 30 years how much we have, so I'm going to plug 30 in, and again, this whole thing can be plugged into your calculator but try to use the not rounded version so you get a more exact answer. Okay. 3.335 ounces. Make sure it makes sense. It's exponential decay, so we started with 4.25, we're down to 3.3. This one? No. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if once you replace K in your calculator, you're just it's a new K every time. Right. Okay. This is a formula for bank accounts. Uh, so anytime you see compounded continuously, if you see these words, you're going to use the PERT formula. So this is a formula commonly used for bank accounts. So hopefully you invest money someday and your money grows exponentially. Right? That's the goal. So this is A sub T would be how much you have at the end after a certain number of years. T is the initial amount you invest. So it's in the same spot as the last function, you still put the initial amount in before the E. Rate, it is uh, whatever the interest rate they're giving you, so the percent, and you have to make it a decimal, that's important. So they're going to give you like 4%, but then you plug in 0.04, right? So like 
with that would be the more stale portion of it. And then T would be the time. So the longer you leave your money in there, the more you're going to have. All right. All right. So Mary deposited $980 at 7% interest, compounded continuously. How much money did she have at the end of nine years? So first thing is the PERT formula. Where do we plug 980 in? T. So we want to know after nine years. So A sub nine. Plugged in $980, our initial investment. So 7% is what decimal? Okay. And then the time is nine years. For this one, plug this whole thing in. You don't have to store anything. You can plug it all in at one time. And since it's money, how many places are we going to round our decimal? Yeah. $1,840.06. Look at that. You didn't do anything except leave it in the bank account. Most banks don't give you 7%. Um, yeah, right.